All right, hello and welcome. My name is Santi, and today I want to show you a really cool. It's, it's kind of like it's not really a built-in feature. It's something that someone from the community figured out, and I want to show you. It's a way to organize uh, bullet points in a really cool way that can show you the hierarchy of things. I'll show you straight away. Let me let me just set this up. So, okay. So as you can see in here, we have I just have like a drop down. This is a heading, and this is a little thing just to unfold or fold things, right? Now, as you can see, I have just some numbers, which are for examples. And if we drop things down, like if we open it, you can see we have 1.1 and it goes further and further, right? Now, these structures are really helpful for when you're aligning any type of ideas that you need to create an outline from, right? So, yeah, as you can see, it just keeps dropping down and that kind of stuff. Now, personally, I think this is kind of messy, like the, the way things just go in a weird as they're not ideal. But once you get used to really using this fold and unfold method for just like compacting information, like making it really compact so that you can access things quickly. Sorry, I think I lost signal for a second, but yeah. So using this fold method really helps you compact information really quickly. And actually I have a shortcut for it. In case you're not familiar with how to set up shortcuts, I'll show you real quick. If you go to, you know, control P or command P gives you this thing. And you can find for anything you like. In my case, I have it mapped to uh, control comma. Uh, so yeah, if we go control comma, we can open the settings. And in here, you can go to hotkeys. So in my case, I have fold, um, fold all headings. Okay, we have a couple of things. This one is the most useful one. Toggle fold on the current line. Now, I have it mapped to alt tab. Uh, that's not there by default. I put it there in, you know, the way you do it, like by default is blank. All you have to do is press here. And now you press the keys that you want to do. So now it's mapped to Alt Tab, right? So now if we go to here and we go Alt Tab. We can toggle it on and off. I'm pressing Alt Tab, Alt Tab, right? And same thing in any single point. Now what I want to show you today is really cool. Now remember the way these things are laid out, right? Now I'm gonna turn on this feature. It's not a simple like plugin. It's something that I'm gonna show you how to do. It's not super hard, but uh, you know, it's, it's kind of bad that if we go to settings, it's not just one of these toggle things where we can just toggle it off and on. So it's not like that, but it's really cool. So I'm going to turn it on right now. So give me a second. And here we go. As you can see now, we have a nice line that shows us which things are related to which. So of course, one is related to two. I mean, it's in the same level of hierarchy, right? Like one, two, and three. And these ones are a bit lower down that hierarchy. And, and these are all connected by lines, right? So I just... Yeah, I just want to show you an example of what this looks like in practice, right? So say, for instance, right now I'm developing, let me just fold all, the, all of these things. Cool, there we go. So right now I'm developing this online course, right? It's for Obsidian, it's for people who want to learn how to create a knowledge-based system, like a, a, something really, really powerful that can help you expand your ideas, explore new ideas and connect things, right? That's what Obsidian is for. It's one of the easiest, most user-friendly tools that can really allow you to do complex stuff. So I'm developing this online course. If you're interested, check out the description. There will be updates on it right now. I'm still working on it, uh, but yeah, either way. So here's an example, right? If we go to, in here we have introduction to Obsidian. If we unfold that, now we have what is Markdown. And as you can see, this line was created right there. What is Markdown is a plain text, is plain text files. And how to use Markdown, I can expand on that. Plain text files are lightweight, owned by you. And I can fold it again or leave it open. Let's just leave it open to see how it forms. We, we have links in Obsidian, how to use backlinks, indexing nodes by topic. And we have a settle custom, which is an advanced method of index card system, originally made in paper, highly interconnected, and a source of knowledge. And yeah, then like this is kind of, as you can see, kind of the structure of certain ideas that I've been playing with for the online course, um, you know, changing how you think about notes. This is like the benefits of a personal system. The system grows with you and then the right tool, in my opinion, should be future proof or as future proof as possible, right? Which is achieved by owning your own notes, right? So yeah, as you can see, like now we have a nice hierarchy. It's very nicely laid out in with these lines that show you this one is at the same level of this. So I think this is an amazing feature, right? So now, hopefully, assuming that I convince you that this is a worthy feature to implement in your system. Um, yeah, let's just go through it, how to set it up. It's not that hard. If you have any knowledge with coding, if you know CSS, this is going to be super easy for you. If not, I'm going to walk you through the easiest way to set this up. So don't worry. Okay, so first we're gonna go to the settings. As as I told you earlier, with with control comma, we can access the settings real quick. Or again, with control P, 
we can just open this thing where we can open anything, right? So super easy. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is go to plugins and you're gonna enable, to just enable the custom CSS function. So as you can see, I have it on. If it's off, it's gonna show you the default theme, right? If you turn it on, now you'll have uh, access to choosing a community theme template, right? So if you go here and you choose anyone, you just press use. Now, as you can see right now, I have a different theme. It's not in this list. It's because I made this one. It's called Reverie. Uh, I haven't made it available yet, but I can keep you updated on that. So if you're interested, either drop a message or message me. Either way, drop a comment, whatever your kids do this day. <laughs> and yeah. So yeah, back to settings. If we go here and we choose any theme, that will create an obsidian.css file. Now, don't worry if you don't understand fully what that is. I'll, I'll walk you through it really quick. And yeah, so once you're selected with one, you're all set to go, right? I currently have mine, so we're all set. And now I'm gonna actually deactivate my camera so that it, it doesn't get in the way. Cool, okay, so camera's off. And now I want to show you this, right? So if we go to um, actually, yeah, I'm just toggling this thing on and off. I have a shortcut for this thing preview. So as you can see, like that just takes us here or here. I have it mapped to Control E. I'm not sure if that's a default, uh, but yeah, either way, Control E uh, just shows me the preview, in which case now I can just click in here. I already had this open. And what I want to show you today is it's just a simple app, it's a text editor, right? Now, Obsidian is great for notes, but when it comes to manipulating certain type of code, uh, it's, it's better to just have a, a determined app for that. I personally use Vim. Um, I'm on Linux. And, you know, I didn't want to show you any Linux -y stuff, like everything's super neutral so that either you, where, whether you use a Mac or a Windows, this probably won't be any conf anything confusing for you. Uh, but yeah, in here, if you go to atom.io, you can see that you, you just can just, you can just download um, the application for your particular operating system. Now, as you can see, because I'm in Linux, it's offering me like Linux stuff, uh, but this will detect if you're in a Mac or a Windows. So download this program, and now you're gonna be able to just manipulate code easily. I think it's honestly the easiest program to use. And yeah, you just, you don't really need to know much to use it. So this is very user-friendly. Okay, so now, as you can see, it's downloaded. Uh, this should be, you know, it's a fairly simple process. So I'm not gonna necessarily walk you through it, especially because I'm in Linux and it might be confusing. But once you have Atom, you will see like some things in here that you can just close, just giving you a welcome guide. And now here I have already my desktop, but if you don't have that, like you can go to file, um, what is it? Open folder, yeah, open folder. And in here you select whatever you want to choose, which in my case, I just chose the desktop because that's where I have my Obsidian uh, demonstration files to show you. So I just press okay, which just gives me access to everything I need in here. So I have my Obsidian uh, vault, in here, so it's in Obsidian Desktop. And here I have all my files. So as you can see here, I can just access any file, like if we just go anywhere, it will show as a text file because this is a markdown file. But of course you won't be able to use the links from Obsidian because this is not using the Obsidian configurations. Now, why are we here, right? We want to set up the, the right configurations to, to do the lines for the bullet points. Now it's a fairly simple process, but I'm gonna walk you through like in very easy steps. So if you go to find, and then you go to find file, you can just go for CSS and it's this one, it's Obsidian CSS. So you just click on it. And now as you can see, we're open here. And this is the CSS file that configures how your Obsidian looks. So when you download someone else's theme, this is the file that downloads to your vault. And it, this depends across different vaults. So whichever vault you're in is gonna change things, right? So this is my theme, this is the one that I created. So if you go down to whatever theme you have, you just go to the bottom of it. And now what you need to do is, actually, let me show you, you need to copy some code. So we're gonna, I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna show you the exact code that you need to copy. So back to Obsidian here, I have a link to a really cool post on the forum that shows you what what is the stuff that you need to do, like different different things that you can apply to your Obsidian setup, right? And this is all done through CSS, so as you will see, it's just a matter of copy pasting code, it's not that hard. So bullet point relationship lines, this is the one that we need. It was created by a member from the community, which is awesome. It was actually, and here's what it looks like, right? It was actually created by uh, this guy, Death A AU, who wanted to be a bit of a, you know, incognito within, like no one knowing that it was him, but like someone said like, ah, yeah, it was created by this guy. 
it's, re it's a really good community i just love it so yeah thank you thank you thank you death aui au uh, for creating this thing is super super helpful i really like it so now if you go to this code all you need to do is select this and now we're gonna copy it right and i have it in copy right now but right now we're gonna go back to atom so now here in atom i want to show you something really important it's comments so when you create a new file, I'm mean, sorry, when you're manipulating a, a file, especially here in CSS, I find it really helpful to be able to comment things out. Now, commenting means that it's little like uh, things, it's like uh, ways that you can divide certain aspects of your code so that you're not confused, like what is what means what, and, and you know, so that you can have a better division of things. So, as you can see here, I commented out something. Now, the way that we comment things out in, in a CSS file because as you can see, this is obsidian.css is by doing a slash, asterisk, and now anything that you write in here will be code. And then you close it again with asterisk and then a slash. So that means that the this file won't read this part because it's a comment. Now, why do I show you this? Because I think it's really useful to have things organized under what are you doing? So bullet point, bullet point uh, relationship uh, lines, there we go. And now as you know, we already copied, sorry, that's not it. <laughs> um, we already copied this thing. And now we go back to, to Atom. Now we have this organized nicely bullet point relationship lines. And we know that everything under this would be that code. And then what, if you want to add anything else, like I recommend doing again, like another comment and you just put anything else. And yeah, then you just go for it. So right now we don't need this. And as you can see, Atom has this nice feature where it shows you this blue dot in here, which where I hover over it, it becomes an X, but like that blue dot means that your file is unsaved. So once you save it, and here's the magic, right? We're gonna save it with Control S, or of course you can go to File, Save. And now that, that blue dot disappears, which means that this file has been saved. And now in Obsidian, without needing to close Obsidian, you will see the lines now. So there we go, as you can see, now we have the lines. So all we, all we needed to do was just add that simple code. I mean, and I highly recommend to just check it out just to try to understand what's going on. Um, this is the most important part of this code, right? Border left, it just means it's a pixel uh, in width. So like that's that's how thick the, the, the actual line is. And then we have a color, right? Which is in RGBA, uh, which gives us different values that we can use to determine what color we wanted. So if we go back to Obsidian, we can see that the line is blue and that's a default of how it was created. Now, personally, I like it. I like it to match the theme a little bit better, but you can choose whatever color you like. I'm just going to show you real quick how to do that in case you want to change the color. Um, so yeah, let's go through it. Now this can be done by just, you, you can Google just color hex or color hex color codes. This is the first page I found and I find it really useful. And here it gives you a couple of different colors that you can go through, right? So let's say this one, right? And I open it and now here's the code. And this code means that this code is gonna represent this color. So when we put that in our in our file, configuration file, uh, the CSS, we're gonna be able to just change it to this color. So I'm gonna show you real quick how that is done. We're gonna copy that and now back into the Atom, <laughs> the Atom, into, into Atom, we can see that here, this is what determines the color. So we're gonna delete this we're actually going to use hex. So now just to show you how hex works, uh, we're going to put, put hashtag, this little thing. And now we're going to paste the code, right? Now it's very important that you keep this semicolon at the end, right? Like that is how CSS helps you determine, like that's kind of like the language it uses to, to determine these kind of things. So now, as you can see, this little dot shows us that it's not saved yet. And now as soon as we save it, if we go back to obsidian, we can see that the line, has now changed colors and you and you can toggle it on and off like that the same thing which right now i'm using alt tab which is my shortcut and yeah everything works perfectly so i actually like that color code a lot um but yeah there you go that's about it all right so yeah there you go there you have it i find this line not just a super aesthetic but also very helpful to just be able to know what matches what like this thing is matching with this one and so on and as you can see like with the example of the numbers and we have a nice hierarchy going on so yeah i really hope you enjoyed this uh if you find it helpful uh, just let me know in the comments i'd love to make more videos like this and again i want to thank the community for developing all this stuff like it's really really amazing 
and I yeah just love Obsidian for its community and for what is how accessible it makes for people to own their nodes and to create this knowledge based system. So again, if you're interested in checking out the course that I'm about to publish, like it's still on developing process, but if you're interested, check out the description. You can find out more about how you can get updates on it or, you know, just keep updated with it. And yeah, let me know if you have any other requests for videos like this that I, yeah, I would just really enjoy doing. So thank you so much for watching and yeah, have a great time. Goodbye. See ya.